If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Oh, dude, here we go. We're going to kick off the the first interview that we did while we were at Paleo FX, man. Yep. And this is what, the second or third time? Well, I mean, Sal and I just recently went down to L.A. We met up with Doug, and this was the first time that Sal and I had met Anders. And Anders is a new addition to the Barbell Shrug team. Yeah. I really like this guy. Really cool guy. Very talented. Yeah. Not, I mean, he's new, but he's very, very talented. He brings well, it- what I liked is like how passionate he was and like how stoked he was to be a part. It's like, it's just, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's contagious. You know, somebody that has that kind of energy that they're coming back in with. First time I met him uh, in this in this episode, so that was pretty Good cool. Good dude. Brings a lot of energy to the table, man. I yeah. think he's a, he's a great addition to their team i think uh we had a great time with him that was the first time just this is the first time justin meets him sal and i already had the pleasure of podcasting with Mm -hmm. him on their show Mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks back and there's a lot of changes that have happened since uh since the first time we met with them now they have something called the shrug collective which is several shows on their channel barbell shrug i'm pretty sure i gave him that idea i'm not sure yeah Yeah. no actually they they actually said that it was uh, oh does mike talk bring it up in there yeah he did bring it up i remember that yeah we all talked about it and then they did it but um, they have all these different shows now under their channel, Barbell Shrugged being one of them, and that's the one with Doug and, and Anders, and they have like the Bledsoe show with Mike and some other mm-hmm. some other shows on there, but this is our third time. We did a first podcast with them a long time ago at Paleo, and that episode n- never aired. Uh, it got lost. Uh, the second one was with, with you and I, Adam. Now, this is the third one, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like we have one more. In was there. there another one? I f- just Was there another time we did? Nope. Oh, that's it. No, huh? it's just I, you guys finally, yeah, we're on Barbell Shrugged uh, with just the two of you. I, I'm, you know, there's part of me that, like, I'm glad the first one didn't get aired anyways because I hated the way we we started. I remember, the, you know, sometimes when you meet somebody the very first time, this was early on when we were- They uh, did the past the conch thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like eight <laughs> guys in the room and then everybody went around like, hi, my name is Adam Schaefer. I'm a recovering <laughs> alcoholic. This is what, you know what I'm saying? We kind of did that. Where like this long walks on the beach. This was definitely our style. Now, there is, you know, I want to apologize for the people that if you don't know Barbell Shrugged and you don't know their, their host- You've got three hosts over there, and then you got three over here. So six is a lot on the podcast. Yeah. I think for the most part, though, we did a really good job of navigating through yeah, that. Um, I think we shared pretty well as far as time and, like, you know, try not to talk over each other. No, and there was a, some great discussions, and we talked about the history of CrossFit, like the ins and outs, like the culture and the controversy, which I was... I didn't know any of that. That stuff. was fascinating for me. Yeah. That was uh, we. I definitely heard some things that I was not familiar with. I had no idea about uh, zone diet being the first real diet right. within CrossFit. I thought it was paleo. Yeah, but so, that was later on. Yeah, so he told some great stories there. Yeah. He told some uh, name drop some people and some crazy shit they've done. Yeah. So we talked yeah. about podcasting because they they have been podcasting for a long time, uh, over six years. Yeah, they've been on air, which in podcast land is a long time. The only person I know. Who we we talked to who's been around longer than that is like is Ben Greenfield, ben, right? Yeah, he's yeah. been doing it for about nine years. Mm-hmm. So so we have some good conversation on that. We talk about the business of podcasting and fitness. I mean, overall, uh, good conversation. And you know, the the new host Anders, I'm really. I really like him. I'm really impressed with him. No, he, I, the first time we met him down there, I thought, and that was his first episode. So the episode that Sal and I did on their show was the first time ever he hopped in. And he talks a little bit about forgetting our names and everything yeah. in this episode. So it's great. So you'll enjoy what his experience was like the first time meeting us and interviewing us. Right, right. right. So great conversation. Also, this month, uh, you're, we have a great promotion because summertime's coming up. And most people want to get lean for the summer to reveal the body they've been working on year long. Now, nutrition plays a massive role in this process. And we have two guides that work on or talk about nutrition. One is the intuitive nutrition guide, and the other is the intermittent fasting guide. Now, you can get both of those for free, okay, this month for free if you enroll in any of our MAPS bundles. Now, bundles are where we combine two or more MAPS programs together and discount the total price by about 30% off. For example, we have something called a super bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, and MAPS Prime, and MAPS Anywhere. And it's a year of exercise programming. And what we did was we took all those programs, put them together, slashed the price way down. Um, And again, if you enroll in that or any other bundle for that matter, you'll get the Intuitive Nutrition Guide and the Fasting Guide for free 
this month only. For more information on those programs, go to mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here's Mind Pump interviewing Barbell Shrug. Is this bigger or smaller than last year's? This couch round table. Slightly smaller. Small. We had seven yeah. last it's, year, I think. Yeah, the, yeah I think seven it was or eight. eight. Seven, seven or eight. eight. I think it was seven. We planned for eight, and it was seven. But then there were also people watching. Yeah. So the oh, room yeah. was yeah. just fuller. Yeah. Were you here last year? No. No, you weren't, right? Yeah. This is yeah, the first time. Number man. one. Yeah, we yeah, we didn't right. like him yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were you weren't proven yet. Yeah. <laughs> what, Whatever what, it is. What's, what is the test? What's the test? What, how do you how do yeah, you make you it? Get how do you make in? it into the inner circle? Uh, <laughs> Did you get oh, jumped? <laughs> well, I was yeah. co-hosting for the first thirteen shows of the year, and then um, this was when Mike was off nomading, right? Fucking so going off this traveling was right, the world right before, before the left. nomad. So starting as the, starting as Colts and shit. Yeah. <laughs> as hey hey hey. <laughs> Sensitive. <laughs> As oh, Mike. Look, I'm not too, I'm, too soon. Is I'm, that too soon? Here's the, thing yeah. is, here's the thing is, if you start saying that, then it's going to attract a very certain type of crowd. <laughs> like, I actually don't want it. <laughs> um, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, as, as the whole, it's as Mike was about to go nomadic, um, we were sitting in a car and I was like, hey, instead of going nomadic, why don't you go nomadic and I'll we'll help you guys build this new thing called yeah. the Shrug Collective. And... Uh, <laughs> Now I'm sitting on your couch. Yeah. So, 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 what was? What's the idea with Shrug Collective versus you know how it was before? It was this Barbell Shrugged? And uh, so thinking about just the Barbell Shrugged and what these guys have built, all the trust and being around for six years, um, I think having one show and you guys do what four or five a week. Um, five. Yeah. Yeah. So having a like one show, no matter how great the show is, it really limits your reach because you're now swamped totally. just by all these people. Like it's just endless information. Um, and these guys have inspired enough podcasters in our space that it was like, we have such a badass network. And it was like, why are we all mm. kind of competing for air? And all, why don't we just create this gigantic hub where we can just put creative, badass thinking people in one spot? And Now, how does that work? Do, their, do, their, do, their, do their podcasts belong to the Barbell Shrug business and then their employees or do they have their own podcast or how does that work? Uh, it's slightly different for for a few different people. So like Mike, he has his own channel sure. and he posts his own shows to his channel, but then he does shows specifically for, for, for our channel that are like health and fitness related. Got it. Okay. But then he has all these other categories he wants to talk about. And so he does those with the blood. So show, um, Ryan Fisher who runs real chalk. And then, uh, um, I keep wanting to say Anders Varner, Michael Anders, mm -hmm. uh, who runs feed me, fuel me, those guys, similar deal. Um, my, Feed Me, Fuel Me, I think only posts with us right now. So they're actually not posting anything on their own channel, mm. um, which I think I think they probably will want to keep posting to their channel. They mm. don't want to let that die. But right now, they're kind of just testing the waters with us. But in the future, maybe they'll do one show with us and then one show on their own channel. Because sure. I, I still think it's a good idea for them to continue to build their own channel. Because all the shows that land with us on the Shrug Collective, there are now our shows. Mm. So... I was just like going to ask they, that. If they cancel, they don't get to take their shows back. We're not taking them down. Like that, that all belongs to us. I, yeah, I was just going to ask that because I, there's always that fear, right? You're going to bring someone on your channel. They're going to reap some of the benefits of your audience. Then they grow and they're like, peace, I'm out of here. And they take off. There's always that fear, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know if it's a fear, but they definitely can do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. It, it, building up like a, a, a nice subscriber base. Like now, like if you start now, really hard to do now. It's so much harder that it's like someone goes, I'm going to balance and go do my own. It, it they, they take a huge step back. So it's one of those things where like there's enough value being offered um, and, and total viewership that you're going to obtain. That Why do you guys think it's so hard right sense. now to start? Why do you think it's so, cause I, I agree with you. I think it's, I think it's way different already today than it was just three just years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Oh, yeah. Dude, totally I, different. I, talk, I talk to someone every day that's like, Oh yeah, I'm starting a podcast. My friend's starting a podcast. Like <laughs> it's just everyone starting it, a podcast yo, right it's now. It's super yeah. fucking fun, right? Like it's yeah. Sunday night and we're up here hanging out and right. talking about whatever the fuck we want. Right, right, right. And we yeah. do it professionally. Right. And everyone thinks it's easy. Right. It's really fucking hard. How much? So you guys have been on air for originally. You started, what, <laughs> he's like, it's seven. really fucking hard. Yeah, I mean, it is like, because he's a guy who jumped into an established show. Sure. Like when you've been doing it for a long time, you don't know how hard it is, and then you stick somebody in who comes in, and, and he, now you've got yeah. all this responsibility. Yep. Well, every yeah, every show, I feel like I, I learn how to structure a conversation better, and it like, you know how you like start doing something, you're like, oh, I'm pretty good at talking to people, like, how. 
<laughs> Why? It's a skill. You're, like yeah. Skill, are you able practice. to develop a skill of having a better conversation? Like, the, I don't think that any of those people that are like starting a podcast are trying to have that conversation with themselves of, it's just like, oh, I got to get better interviews. No, you got to get better at talking to people and having a... We were just talking to bringing this, them down we, a, a before cool Paul road. left. This is what we ended on was this conversation yep. was the difference between that and like uh, people that communicate or speak to somebody versus having dialogue. This is a dialogue. And that's really like the, yeah. the art of this is the ability. It's like it's not one person who's giving an opinion, talking. This is how it is. It's collective minds coming together and sharing their thought process. And it's just this even flow. Yeah. It's like a dance together. All of yeah. us. Yeah, cool. you have to find an even ground with people, which is really hard to do and guide them to finding their, their best self in like an hour. Because right. most people, they, even if you're a really great trainer, if you're not world class, you're probably just kind of really good at what you do and you have some really good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the people that, you know, you should be able to test people and see how far they can go and find out how so good they really are. So you're a fun one to ask because yeah. you're diving head first into all this with yeah. these guys. So what are some of the challenges that where you're like, fuck, that was stupid? Or, oh, have you I forgot your guys' name on day one. <laughs> <laughs> first interview. <laughs> I was all stoked. It was literally like the best day ever. Like if you were going to like, picture this day of like you're taking over barbell shrugged like i'd really like to go to like one of my best friends gym check we did that love to lift weights with my friends check it'd be really cool if like a hot chick brought food to us check <laughs> um now we're gonna go into the show and i fucked up the very first thing you're supposed to do like <laughs> get the guest name right <laughs> figure it out <laughs> <laughs> and, like you actually play the the tape in your head you're like oh it's coming up on wednesday i'm gonna have to crush this what do i say uh, like i'm gonna paint this beautiful picture no you're going to forget the guest name right off yeah. the bat. So <laughs> I always find the best podcasts are the ones where you feel like you're just sitting in on it, like you're eavesdropping on a really good conversation. And yeah. you know what happens mm -hmm. in real life? You forget people's names. Yeah. So yeah. it's really not a big, it's yeah. really not that big of a deal. Um, and especially when you're dealing with like, we don't give a shit. You forget my name. I don't care. I forgot your name. Yeah. Just right now, in fact. Who the fuck are you? It's not a, it's not a big ender. That's, that's, it. that's what we call <laughs> Justin. Do you guys see Justin's name We're tag? Totally the, other yeah. the other guy? Yeah. The other guy? The whole the thing is a wash about me now. <laughs> so, you know, so I have a question. Because you, you guys started your podcast originally how many years ago? Very beginning of 2012, so six. So six years ago, which in podcast land is a long time, right? Anything over, yeah. I think, three or four years is like a... Like ancient, right? Yeah. For OGs, how for sure. di how different is the world now? How much more or less competitive is it now? What are the differences you guys are are, are noticing now versus when you first started? Uh, when well, when I first started, the audio like getting amazing audio quality was rare. Mm. So most podcasts were just Selling shitty phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah just shitty calls. phone calls. Background noise. And it, like, yeah, just like things were cutting up. So like that was like nine out of 10 podcasts were shitty like that. Mm -hmm. So if you had good audio, that's all you had to do is stand out. Mm. All right, that's what, that was one of the things that I saw in the beginning was do that. Mm -hmm. But now everyone's got amazing audio. And even if you're doing a Skype interview, the audio quality is better than you know, it was way like better. That. Yeah. So it's like, it's like trying to win on audio quality now. Mm -hmm. Isn't it's kind of like everyone, everything. Oh, the standards out. coming up. Yeah, it, it, oh, the standards it, it, just come way up. Yeah, there's a new standard now where you just if you, I mean, I find myself doing this now too. I don't care how good the guest is, how good the content is. I've been so spoiled by good sounding podcasts that if you sound echoey in a bathroom or anything like that, like you, it loses me. I, I can't, started. I, can't, I, won't, I won't listen yeah. to it. I started turning yeah. down being interviewed on podcasts that don't do it in person. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I don't. I, hate, yeah. <clears throat> I just don't Same know here. if I want to be recorded shitty. When you do the ones on Skype, you feel like you're just giving shtick. You're just because mm -hmm. you can't be, you don't feel that person. You're just right. like, Ugh. you can't read their like, body language. I'm just going to talk to my computer uh, for a little yeah. bit here. I, 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 I still it. get into it. I'm like standing up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> like, I'm like, ah. Well, like, I'll literally <laughs> like pace yeah. in the house, but I'm like, who am I talking to? Like, you're, you're kind of talking to yourself, like making yourself yeah. believe this thing you're going well, the part of the reason of, the podcasts are, yeah. are so awesome is that like we come together right now we all hang out we kick it together last year we were, we, were, we partied afterward like maybe we trained together maybe we go get a meal together like and you walk away like either strengthening and or making a, a new friend or a new mm -hmm. group of yeah. friends like in person or sorry on a uh, on skype or whatever i've done people's shows and they had come, people come up to me six months later and be like oh wow like you know adam and i and i'm like no like wait who's that and they, they're like how like why do you think i know them they're like you're on a show and i was like w which guy was that and they say the show name and i'm like 
I never heard of that show. Because like, <laughs> I, like, I just talked to some random dude for like yeah. an hour just because he asked me over Instagram if I would come on a show and I said, okay. But like, there was no real connection Oh, that, that happened to us while we were here at Paleo. Yeah. So we, this girl comes running up to us. She interviewed us from Australia mm-hmm. and she's hugging us. And oh, yeah. this she was that. from Hong Kong, but she's Austra- Australian. Yeah, she's yeah, Australian yeah. from Hong Kong and now lives in New York. And yeah, we've done quite a few interviews. You're talking about. For, you do? Okay, so... Mm-hmm. She's, she's she, awesome. com- she comes over having fun with it and stuff like that and she makes a comment and uh, and Sal acts like he remembers and I could tell he doesn't remember and I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> she and caught him. She oh, straight yeah. called him oh, right wow. out. She goes, oh, really? the don't act like you remember oh. who I am. And then she, yeah, <laughs> I died laughing. You know, he's like, yeah. he's trying, to play, awesome. trying to play it off yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of nodding his head. I'm like, this motherfucker don't remember because I don't yeah. remember. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's over Skype. And you, yeah. and of course for us, the, the accent, like I'm sure just like, we sound like we sound like yeah. all the same i'm sure to someone over there right mm-hmm. they all sound all the ones i've done over there they all sound really safe so i'm not yeah. picking up anything i didn't see you so i can't make any connections <laughs> no. in, in most total, communication total. Is, is is non-verbal anyway how do you do that over the phone yeah it's, uh, right. it's almost impossible you don't know yeah. when to come in a lot of times because it's like you're it's such like a distant conversation you're having with this person and i'm just like trying to pick up on all these cues when to come in when to come out yeah. and you just don't get it so it's tough man. Dude, especially if there's a delay and you do the like oh yeah you, you're yeah. talking but I don't know you're talking yet, and so I start talking. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, no, no, and no, that happens. No, it's so no, no, you go. You go. Whole time like, you on play Skype. That game? Oh. I can't fucking joke on Skype at all. This is well received. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's just, not, just like, it's yeah. definitely not as funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No, not no, as funny. No, not at all. Total oh. tangent. But do you remember that girl saying that she pays seven grand a month for her two, her two bedroom apartment in New, in Manhattan? Oh, yeah, that's her. I was like, brutal. God, it's the same girl, right? Yeah, same girl. Yeah, yeah, brutal. That's is seven, that what she said? Yeah, seven grand. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, not bad. You, you, San Francisco is almost like that now. I was going to yeah. say, you guys are in NorCal. Like, you got to have some. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's apartment. Like he, he has a two bedroom for six grand. <sighs> yeah, in San Francisco. And then you just walk outside and it's chaos all <laughs> <Yeah>. day long. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It, isn't that funny that we pay? I think, I think that will change, though. I really think with the way, like, you see how we can get around so much faster and easier. Soon our cars will be moving offices and I think people then will start seeking to get out of the city. It's so popular to be in the city right now and yeah. in the mix of everybody because that means you have that most access to everything. That's why. Right. Yeah. That's the only yeah. reason why. But when we have the access anywhere we want, which we're right around the corner from that, yeah. you, you better believe the houses that are up in the mountains yeah. and far away. They're, they're well, especially be, with self-driving cars. Yeah. yeah. It's going to spread out so. and then there's going to be like we right now we have everything concentrated in one area and you have farmland all over the right. place. It's just going to spread out and there's going to be more farmland within where you're living. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a healthier way of doing things. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. we're, we're coming. It's, I think it's around the corner, man. I, yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely do you, better. Do you guys find that as wh- wherever you're at, like my wife and I are moving to that already just because it's like it's fucking chaos mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. and like you get on the five. Five is like a war zone. <laughs> like I have no, it's not, it's not a fun place to be. No. And when you're up and down from LA or like Newport all the time, it's like, where, where is my life being spent? What am I practicing the most? Sitting in this fucking car all day long. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you can just, listen to Mind Pump. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's, well, that's, that's the time. You know, yeah. what's, what's happening? <laughs> that's who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Commuters, that's, that's, right. that's, that's our right. target audience. No, hey, what, what, what was the craziest thing Paul said today, by the way? Oh, oh God. You know, okay. Give me like a top three. You know, here's Paul's trying to retain you that. You know, the thing about like, Paul, he's, he's one of the... What did Dustin say? You want to describe a Picasso? <laughs> uh, piece of art you know that's like it's how impossible. it is retaining that kind of information yeah. he said some of, you know he said a few things he said something about uh, exercise as it's uh, he called it um, stress a way to apply stress or something like that or a way to utilize stress or manipulate stress on the body mm-hmm. therefore you need to consider all forms of stress that happen to you uh, they all that's all part of the equation right. but the way he put it was so was so yeah. so brilliant so right right yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we used to say all stress is cumulative yeah, yeah. it's all it's all it's all stress it's all stress on the body, but the way he put it was very well. But you know how he communicates. He communicates very. He'll go super narrow and deep, yeah. and then you'll spread out to the sides, and then you're talking about something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. But you're enthralled. I always tell somebody yeah. who hasn't heard, listened to it's Paul is like, you know, bear with it, stick all the way through it, mm-hmm. because w- within it, 
you will find something in there for you that like yeah. so much scattered wisdom. Because there'll be times yeah. he would be talking yeah. right, and we're, I'd be sitting there listening for like five minutes, and I'm deeply into what he's saying, and he goes so fucking deep, and then starts going out that I get lost, yeah. and I'm trying to regather my thoughts. Like, what is he answering right now? Because now I forgot what we were even yep. answering, yeah. right? But then he'll say, and then all of a sudden he'll go just grace right over this like profound thing, and it went, whoa, hold on, you got to say yeah. that again. That yeah. was fucking deep as I think, fuck. I think Paul's one of those people where. The more you know, the more you think he knows. Because <laughs> like, you, yes, you, you have dude. context into why he's a yeah. fucking genius. Like, yeah. oh shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, get you it. know Just when you put that YouTube video up, and half the comments are like, "You fucking quack," yeah. And then the other one's like, "You're the greatest person yeah. in the world." Yeah. You're <laughs> right. Yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. you're right. Yeah, you man. did it. You know, I asked him. I said, "What? Why? Why do you know? Why do you? Why do you have this insatiable thirst for all this different kinds of knowledge?" And he goes, "Well, when you're trying to figure out how to like optimize your health, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm, I'm definitely not communicating the way he does. When he says you're trying to figure out your health, like you start with." Figuring out like, okay, I need to exercise. Well, it affects these parts of my body. And these parts of my body are affected with this with food. And the food comes from the earth. And the earth comes from the planets and the stars. And everything's connected. And then the energy and then your thoughts. And he went all out and out and out. And I'm like, Whoa. I guess you're right. You need to know everything. You need to study everything to literally understand how to truly optimize or, or become mm -hmm. your most healthiest well self or whatever. Have you guys thought about doing it as class or is like my girlfriend took his HL? No, she took his HLC one course cool. and loved it. Yeah. So when I have trainers, uh, like I have a lot of trainers that will I feel uh, like message we, me. I feel like we're blessed to get the better version. Yeah. We get to curate it. Yeah. You know what I'm yes. saying? It's yeah. like, I get to ask him what I want to fucking yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, don't, I, have, I think where yeah. I'm at in my fitness career of sitting in all those classrooms and getting yeah. certifications, I, 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 I'm, I want to know the brilliant minds behind those yeah, certifications and then I want to ask the questions that I want to ask. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those guys where yeah. I, I enjoy these moments. Yeah. You know? have you, yeah, you, another thing I've noticed with the, the current state of podcasting is in the past, and you, may, and you guys are, are changing this, it used to be like, you know, one episode a week, two episodes a week. Now you need to have a lot more. I mean, we started out yeah. with, we started out yeah. out the gates with a lot, but it seems like more now. Well, we didn't. We only started with two. We started with two yeah. at the very beginning, and then we went to three, and then we are you guys four, seeing that in the, in the in the rest of the space? We actually, a, uh, in the rest of the space, I think we are kind of the only one that have thought about this. As, there's a few. So other, I'm doing but, the network. No, no, just having that many shows. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. whether it's a network or I'll tell week. you what. Meeting yeah. you guys is what got me thinking about doing them more frequently. I basically, after that night we hung out, mm -hmm. I went home and that week we, I, I said, hey, I think we need to bump our frequency somehow. Well, we thought mm -hmm. that at the beginning it would be, we, it was like hopefully 60% of the audience will show up for these other shows and like we'll have the trust just because they're in here, people will like them and 100% yep. day one. Yep. It was well, just... Oh, well, wow. We, we, Are you guys actually blowing them up as quick as yourselves? Oh, they, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. wow. See, I would yeah. not have thought oh, wow. that. Awesome. Yeah, we thought I would have thought really you still be... get some. like you're Because I feel yeah. like there's going to be some people that probably identify with some of the other hosts for the other shows. Totally. But yeah. so much loyal to you guys that only I'm listening to you guys, but yeah. you actually are getting that many people that are listening to their shows. Wow. Yeah. Barbara yeah. Shrug's like middle of the pack. Yeah, That's, I, I wow. think it's like a... That's those shows in the lead. Wow. Everyone's a complete new look. <laughs> like, there is no... Starting whatever it was, April 1st that we launched it, it... Nothing is the same. Like Barbell Shrugged isn't even the same. So we're all literally, we just all have a platform and. Oh, that's really cool. We'll that's see. interesting. We'll now, did huh. you guys think that was going to happen? Because I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have thought that people. Dude. All right. This was such a big leap. I just had no idea. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, we we're just like, this is a serious experiment. Oh, cool. This is this is like a lesson that everybody keeps learning. Like, if you have an audience, it, the more you can produce, the more that they, they'll consume. And so it's just a content war. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Just can, just produce more information, good quality. It's got to be quality. It's got to be good. Yeah. Of yeah. course, you can't put out shit. But That's the trust in you, right? Because yeah. they, they, I, I trust the you. I love you as a show. I trust you'll curate that for me. You're not going to bring mm -hmm. some douchebag underneath your collective. You're going to pick people who you guys like and probably think a lot alike. So that makes sense. But fuck, well, I would have I would not have thought that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So you guys have done how many? podcast since you've been up here at paleo you said we did this is 15 this is number Whoa. 15 yeah. podcast hard i yeah. just We're gonna so, have to get you guys a shirt <laughs> now know, we, uh, <laughs> you may have earned a shirt yeah. Yeah. like you have <laughs> when talking about this at the beginning i was like bledsoe what what should i do he was like you know 
I've gotten burnt out a couple times. I called Doug. I was like, we're going to fucking do it. Like, just load it up. We'll see what the we'll see what the max is on the first one, and we'll back it down from there. 15 is a good number. <laughs> it's a heavy number. Last night, I walked out, and it felt like I just got hit by a truck all day long. It's a yeah. lot of energy. Yeah. Our standard is two shows a day. I think that's, uh, that's like the maximum that – that is sustainable for many days in a row That's what we while found. keeping the quality of the shows very, right. very high. Every, everyone on the team is happy. Everyone's still getting enough food. Everyone's sleeping well. Everyone's getting their workouts mm-hmm. in. We're practicing what we preach by making time to fucking train yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's rather exactly. than just like being like, That's everyone needs to prioritize training. If, and if, getting if it's laid. not a priority, then yeah. you're not going to do it. <laughs> You're not too busy. You've got to make it a priority. And then they're like, would you train today? I'm like, well, no, I'm fucking busy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, though, because that's exactly about where we land, right? We figured that out because we've pushed some limits as far as... We've I think, done five, yeah, six. And yeah, it's we've like, done some... Yeah. Cra- and it's yeah. just not worth it because you're right. You start to... And there's nothing worse than like the fourth or fifth cast. Like, get the probably would have been the better interview, but you're so fucking burnt from the three yeah. or four. It's For like, me, though, yeah. I like am so new at hosting that I learn so much so fast well, right now. So that's what so we also... So the best show that I really have done today was number 14, mm-hmm. or of oh, all shit. of them. Like, so we we, remember, we, we noticed this, mm-hmm. too. So we, with, we with always... Buddy, Mike Salemi. He's, we, he's smashed. He's crushed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a good Mike's guy. Good. He's, he's awesome. a good, very, very we, good we, we always grow after a 15-episode a, a type of sprint. Like, when yeah. we do them all like that, because it's just it's just like anything, I'm practicing anything else, or like a sport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if, you're in, if you've yeah. wakeboarded, surfed, mm-hmm. snowboarded, done any of those things before, have you ever ridden for like a whole week and gone on vacation and done that? Like, fuck, that's... You make the biggest gains right there in your skill. Salemi was really, really good, but it was the first time where I was like in the conversation and felt like it was kind of like mm. very well structured. And I was like, man, if I have to go to this length every time, just to have a good interview, it's going to be a long life. <laughs> so, well, yeah. th- that happens a lot too, though. Mm-hmm. It's very normal, especially when you get guests that, you know, there's some guests you'll drop right in. Yeah. And dynamic dialogue happens and stuff like that. Then there's a lot of guests where you'll spend 30 minutes to an hour, almost just getting to there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just so blah, blah, blah. How long are yours usually? Our shows? Yeah. Uh, one and a half, two and a half hours typically. Yeah. Right more than the, two hours. When we first days. started, it was like 40 minute shows. Shit, and shorter then, than that. Our first strategy was for the commute. The average commute in the US is 25 minutes. Yeah. So we tried to keep it right around 25, 30 minutes yeah, at first. Right. It was, yeah. so it's totally. No, and, it, and we don't, we, we end them when we end them and so they typically go about an hour and a half to our, our, our episodes when we do interviews they can go anywhere they can go up to three four hours so we went mike nelson he was like two and change oh how Dude, was that savage yeah that's not that guy got yeah. Yeah. i interviewed great. him as well amazing killed yeah. right killed yeah, yeah he, so, so anything he's saying yeah. right now just listen we, we do him like standing and there's like a physical battle kind of like going on yeah. and <laughs> i mean like we're like you're, you're in it. Like, it becomes an intense conversation. You're standing, and everyone's kind of feeling each other out. And you look over, and there's just, like, this statue that is just hammering micronutrients in your face. And you're like, dude, I quit. Like, <laughs> you won today. <laughs> like, Doug's, Doug's throwing out words, and Adam and I just looked at each other like, that it's it's on them now. Well, I, I've lost control. <laughs> They're talking about things I had no clue. It was – he killed. Who was your worst – um, who was the worst? Um, are we allowed to say names here? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, it doesn't right mean on. that they were bad. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. No, yeah, so yeah. in a strength and conditioning podcast, I think sometimes uh, it can be real. I really like the shows. We don't, we don't, that, need, we don't need to say names. It's yeah. an athlete. Just, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. I like shows that dig deep. Like, I really dig Mike Nelson. I want, I don't want to win the conversation. Yeah. And I don't want to, I want to learn. Like, I'm here to... I get to talk to the smartest people in the freaking game. Mm-hmm. You spend your whole life reading and writing and listening and trying to learn all this shit. And now I got you in a room. I want to know everything. Mm. And if someone keeps it really surface level, I don't want to hear that. Mm. I want to dig. And one of the things that... W- That's nice of you not to roll them. I yeah, roll them, we, motherfuckers. We name names no, but I roll them. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you come on my no, show and you're surface. That might be the last time yeah, you come on the show. I and shit. I hate a, that stuff. I think there's a bigger point to it, and we talk about it a lot, is I want to go long. I want to go three hours. I'll be beat to shit at the end of it, but if you... Can, everyone's got an hour. It's kind of like stand-up comedy, right? Like, you're there to entertain, and if you don't have more than an hour, you haven't really done enough work mm-hmm. if that makes sense can you sense and feel the guys that come on yeah. the show and they it, have an agenda and they have something they can't do? or they can't 
veer off. Like they, they can't tangent. Yeah. If you ask a question, they come right back to their thing. Yeah. Um, so I love to fuck with dudes like this, that you're coming in, they're the strength conditioning world, they're science guys, and also don't ask about their sex life. Oh, yeah. 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 You, know, so you want to throw, you want to throw a dude off who's coming in. He's all he's I been was, thinking about is macronutrients and fucking all this shit. All and, I, when Mark Sisson yeah. was awesome. And all I wanted to do was talk to him about his sex life. Right. It's like, what do you do at like that age? What do I have to look forward to? If I eat perfect and I train perfect, you're telling me there's vagina at 60. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, Rank so. the quality of your boners. Uh, I'll yeah. one yeah. Tell me everything. Did you get a chance to ask him that? No. He, oh, I was he, like, he had a talk would be, to go to. And see, it was I would like, love to hear that I answer. Know. I would I love to know. Hear the primal blueprint. Yeah. Let's talk about it. That, that was a bummer, Will dude. I get laid at 60? Yeah. He got sucked into a panel last minute. So we only yeah. had 40 minutes with him. Yeah. So I was super oh, that sucks. Uh, what did yeah. you do before? Yeah. What did you do before all this? What, 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 are you doing this full time now? Uh, so I own another business as well. Um, Remember you had, I, two, you, yeah. had two, you had two CrossFit gyms. I ran that's two right, CrossFit that's right, gyms, that's right. moved them into one gigantic one, sold it a year and a half ago, started up an online movement rehabilitation company with a physical therapist, and uh, this happened. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. This is where it's at. Really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys, What do you think of the state of uh, uh, of that world, that CrossFit world? It's uh, changed a lot in a very short period of time. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's changed very, very rapidly. And what are the goods and bads that you've seen that change? Um, so I guess to me that's like a, a culture thing and not a training thing. Mm -hmm. um, for the type of training back in the day, the people that were doing it were really hardcore. They were already squatting. They were already deadlifting. And then all of a sudden someone put this structure together that said, hey, see who's stronger. Mm. See who's faster. And we'll make a scoreboard. Awesome. Well, all the meatheads showed up. Mm -hmm. And everybody that was like already doing that and already doing conditioning, just it just fit. Right. And then it hit the mainstream. And there was a lot of people that didn't have 10 years of back squats under their belt before they started doing it really fast. Mm -hmm. And the separation between the marketing and the actual person that's doing it got really weird there for a second. Um, it was I very well explained. Yeah. I yeah. think that Agreed. the... Uh, state of CrossFit Inc. is doing really well. Uh, maybe the affiliate side's down internationally. I think they're growing. Uh, but I think that most importantly is they dominate the media. Um, it is the, the team that they have that's covering the games. Like, they created a sport. It's real. Oh, yeah. the, the, the cost to putting the games on is incredible. Uh, so they have to keep feeding that. Like, that's a very real thing. And... Who's feeling the heat is gym owners, especially in very populated places because they were all over the place. Yeah. Um, and it's really starting to force this, like the cream will rise to the top mentality, right? Where it's, you, I mean, I've seen CrossFits that have, are like fucking 50 yards apart from each other. Right. You, one can't, the, you can't yeah, be a douchebag so like in one retail location. Yeah. Now too, so one of the things I struggled with up. so much was in the beginning stages, I owned a CrossFit gym. Whether it was cool or not, when someone walked in, they said, well, what is CrossFit? And now I have a place to educate. Mm -hmm. And now I can teach them about what we're doing. Who doesn't know what CrossFit is now? Right. So you're either looking for that or you're not. Yeah. There's no, hey, I heard about this. Is there a way that this could be for me? And you can come in and teach somebody some fundamentals, whatever it is. Everybody already knows. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it for three months. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm going to go do F45 for three months. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, There's I'll, nothing special. I'll say this. Uh, in the 20 years I've been in, in fitness, in the industry of fitness, I have never seen anything impact fitness uh, as much as CrossFit. It yeah. was a massive change in the gyms. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but when I, when I used to run clubs, we, you know, when I, I'd be a 35,000, 40,000 square foot facility. There'd be one or two, two squat racks, and it would have dust on it. Like nobody would squat. Nobody would deadlift. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody did those lifts, and CrossFit single-handedly made those lifts – Cool. Popular, popular, and, in, yeah. among, and, and among they women. were when it all started. Oh, yeah. yeah, they were the most popular things when they first started. There's a lot of girls doing cleaning jerks. Yes, yeah. it's oh, yeah. incredible. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. And it looks good. Even mediocre lifters in CrossFit gyms are doing way better cleaning jerks than my first one when mm -hmm. I started doing. Like, it's really incredible how many people are very comfortable with complex movements, moving a lot of weight, getting things overhead, like understanding positioning. You can have that conversation with a very large group of people now. Now, what about the nutritional philosophy? It, it started out very paleo, but then it feels like it's moved out a little no, bit for performance. No, it didn't start off paleo. It started further back than that. Did oh, it? Yeah. How did it start? 
Zone. Zone. Oh, no. wow. oh shit! Doctor Barry so no Sears. The show. Yeah, the when you has guys said no, no I had forgotten about I, him. I was like, who are they about? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's Good. a long oh, yeah. time ago. Oh, Barry yeah, Sears no and idea. Barry Sears and Glassman were we, tied. Yeah, so it was Zone. Oh, wow, I didn't and know then, that. And then they started doing. Uh, nutri- they had the the CrossFit specialty course nutrition, and it was Zone. And then, for some reason, they brought Rob Wolf in. To, I think he was helping with curriculum and started teaching but he's putting this paleo spin on everything yeah mm. and so there was like people started saying oh i'm paleo zone like oh, wow. and then um but it was like uh You're going way back dude i know this is 10 years ago yeah stuff. that's yeah. wild mm-hmm. it's all paleo z- in I'm here like paleo dude, zone. i remember the blog said that before how ridiculous is that <laughs> oh i'm like paleo zone what the I just oh, learned wow. about keto veganism yesterday. So, oh, my God. <laughs> That's no, fucking true. How? how do you even do that? That's my question. Uh, how do you, yeah, about to how, get hooked up with the Topo Chico. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so it what people were then saying like, "This is hey, I'm, I'm, I'm paleo zone." So now right you're following the sir. zone prescription, but with the paleo within the paleo whatever, and so, um, <laughs> and then people would also say like, "Zone is like." A set amount of fats, proteins, and carbs. Right. But then people, 40, 40, 30. So it got, it was like, then there were articles coming out in the CrossFit Journal that were like, this is Chris Spieler because he's an athlete. He does zone plus four fat. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that motherfucker's not <laughs> totally doing zone, fat. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and he it's did like, say all that ridiculous shit. It did. It <laughs> fucking did. It's so stupid. It was, I'm, I'm, I remember that. Like, it took me about one week of like reading those and seeing some videos oh, where people like, I'm man. zone plus something fat, so much fat, so much fat. And I'm going. Now, were you, okay, did you and see after, the bullshit? And, right and, and, and I was like, yeah, what am I plus? I was like, and then I was like, dude, counting all these zone blocks is way more complicated than calories. And now I'm adding fat blocks. This is the dumbest shit ever. Yeah. Like, because I'll just go back to counting calories. Yeah. <laughs> the zone block was like, if you did one thing, it was like you got three oh. almonds. So you've got people squatting and deadlifting heavy as shit and counting nine almonds out as if that's going to like really it's, get it's them to fucking their goals. No, no, no. Oh this was God. the typical thing. This was what was taught. Oh, this is cool. I remember being at the level one certification, San Diego, 2008. And they, they were talking about, you know, oh, you don't have time for lunch. This is actually a pretty good thing that they did, but you don't have time for lunch. People... Like how much time they did a test. They, how much time does it take for someone to go to like Wendy's or McDonald's or something like that? Go get a burger, and someone to go to the local grocery store, get uh, deli meat, strawberries, and almonds. You know, mm-hmm. so you can make your zone meal. Yeah. And and they did this test. It was like it was faster, it was cheaper, and everything. It's like it's better. It's like more convenient and cheaper to eat healthy. It was what they were saying. So Which then, is a pretty good message to be giving, right? Yeah, overall. Yeah. But then everyone starts eating. Almonds, not lunch <laughs> meat. Yeah, it was like, it's like that's what they did. I did it. I went home. I was like, this is awfully convenient. Strawberries, uh, lunch meat, and almonds. So that became, that was like the zone thing for a lot of people just because they did that at the level one for a while. But what ended up happening is, that I think there was just some confusion about are we supposed to be doing zone or paleo or whatever. And then there was this thing called Black Box Summit. Oh, yeah. so good. Yes. This is where it all started, actually. Yeah. The, oh, this the is madness. Great. The I didn't madness. know any of this shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I going. actually, I, I'm just, a, at this point, I'm just a fucking gym owner in Memphis, Tennessee, who's been exposed to CrossFit yeah. headquarters one time at level one certification. I've got really no ties to anything. Mm. And I'm, I'm just kind of like on the internet saying, what's happening with CrossFit? <laughs> and so they had this. So there was a summit that was put together that was not cr- CrossFit didn't put together, but some boxes got together, some gyms, and said they were going to do this thing. But there was a lot of CrossFit representation there. And Ro- what was it? Oh, shit. It's the Olympic Greg, weightlifter. Greg, Greg Glassman. Greg Everett. Uh, Greg, Everett. Uh, Greg, Greg Everett. Greg Everett. Greg Everett. Greg Everett. Yeah. yeah. So Greg Everett um, was doing a slideshow, and he was showing basically how CrossFitters need to get better at weightlifting. But he uses a picture – from the CrossFit Journal of someone weightlifting to to point out what you should not be doing. Yeah. Oh, so Dave, <laughs> and Dave all these CrossFit. Yeah, oh, sorry, okay. yeah. So Dave Castro like stands up and starts cur- like cussing him out during the cl- presentation. during the presentation. Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> They're challenging him to fight. Like he took him oh, outside yeah. to fight. Oh yeah. Oh and shit! Rob, wow. Rob Wolf had to get involved in the whole <laughs> oh, altercation, and yeah. Rob was like, 
He's a jiu-jitsu guy. He's like, I'll fucking kick your yeah, ass. Like, <laughs> yeah. but, but Dave Castro is like former Navy SEAL, like one of oh, the baddest wow, dudes. Shit. And it's like, all right. So I, probably, I wouldn't fuck with Dave Castro. Yeah, but um, <laughs> <laughs> generally speaking. Yeah. Generally speaking. Uh, but uh, but that, that was that huge altercation. And so I, with that, I think Dave um, – and uh, Rob had words, and then Rob was kicked out of CrossFit and not doing nutrition anymore and so for them. And so it was one of those cases where it was one of the first people who – it's not the first guy, but one of the first people who got kicked out of the CrossFit community who was in a leadership position. Wow. And, and then how did he come back then? He didn't. Oh, I didn't know. No, he did. no, no. no. Yeah. Rob, Rob – He's still Rob, heavily followed Rob by a lot of people in that world. But that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, but it ended it. up probably being the best thing that ever happened to yeah. Rob. Because it gets him a lot of attention. Yeah. He's got a book coming out like right after that. Yeah. The Paleo Solution. His book fucking blows up. Mm -hmm. He's like the man when it comes to paleo. Yeah. So a lot of people. And then, and then I think when. I think around that time CrossFit started being more of like. Yeah zone. But like taking less of a strong stance on nutrition mm -hmm. period. And because so many people. I think so many CrossFitters weren't following yeah. it. Now, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I know, one of the biggest things I noticed about CrossFit is it had this, and, and I'm going to use the term cult, but it, it's not, obviously, but it had that feel of, like, everybody ate the same way, mm -hmm. trained a certain yeah. way, and then, like, even their politics. Like, there's this huge libertarian, mm -hmm. like, uh, streak within. How did that start? Yeah. Is that just from Greg Glassman, or is that, like, part of the, like, hey, listen, if you get our certification, way you less get to believe, so, get, get way less so now than, than five or ten <laughs> oh, years man. ago. That, that's calmed go, down a little bit. If you, but, if you but, yes. can go to the old blog like the old type pad blog that they had running back 07, 08, all the way probably, I, I want to say 2010, 2011, they were posting a lot of libertarian views as, so you have the workout, you had a picture of someone <laughs> doing like the a, workout and then you had like a little, little link about this way. <laughs> something that's completely unrelated. <laughs> oh, wow. There's nice. a very libertarian view yeah. on something. And so it was, it was, rest, a, it was the rest day comments. They would always post an, an article that, that they too. wanted you to read on the rest day. And oh, that was the only way that they could, yeah, <laughs> like this is what you're supposed to do today is read this, uh, whatever. Who was, do you guys know who was providing it or who was writing it at the time? I, I think, no, I, so, but it, Ka go ahead. I, I don't know. Well, the posts on CrossFit. Yeah. But they were linking to a lot of different things, but you're wondering who's selecting this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm exactly. Sure yeah. Glassman was in charge of most of the content at the time. Well, obviously he's approving it for sure. I know I that. I think Castro took over the programming. Yeah. Like, for the daily website and all that yeah. stuff. Now, do you guys see, you know, like in other sports, I know I see this a lot where like, because now it's becoming so big and there's all fame around it now. These All these guys that are the top performers and shit. Are you starting to see bad habits or stupid things that people do just because this guy trains that way or he does, he wears this thing or does a certain thing? Are you seeing other people like mimic that to be like that when they shouldn't be? Do you see things like that? I feel what? like there's less of that now than there was even a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. really? I feel like the, the, the guys at the games are like, they're so far beyond now, like the normal person. Uh, that People are accepting that. People that, are, they're that people are like going, well, okay, he does that, but he's, he's this guy. Uh, so you know? here, that makes sense. Here's yeah. another thing that happened though. CrossFit in 2005, if you're going to do it, you were a really independent thinker. You weren't really following. You were looking for something that nobody else was doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it creates a lot of personalities. So when regionals happens, now all of a sudden you've got these really weird people showing up. That's true. And <laughs> like you know, all, all, yeah. the, all the early adopters. The early oh, adopters yeah. were yeah. like wild way people, like really yeah. intense, either like hardcore military people or like dingy garage gym owner type people. They, they did not want to listen to people. And that was Glassman's culture of CrossFit back in the day. As the sport's grown and as Reebok has come on, now all of a sudden we need to create what this profile looks like. Sure. And they've beaten down all the people that have had this personality. Like I'm friends with a lot of them. I've seen. Is there a lot of resentment from them? Mm, do you think Fisher feels resentment? I think he actually loves attention. And if Castro wants to suspend him for a year. Um, he told a judge he was going to fucking kill him in the middle of a competition. Oh, <laughs> my God. Like, but he was no what? repping him. Yeah, so, he was no you know. repping him. You guys, uh -oh. the guys <laughs> felt <laughs> You guys would love you guys, totally There's okay. nothing more frustrating than getting yeah. no repped in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I going to have to do more, but yeah. now I'm going to lose. But there's like a whole story <laughs> of how much like Fisher's life was – 
really at the bottom at the time and CrossFit was the only thing he had. So when someone's taking every, all the work away from him and he just lost his mind wow. out there. But um, well, yeah. And he was actually doing pretty good reps. Yeah, he, he was, was just going so yeah. fast. Have you guys had anybody like the guy was like having trouble like seeing all the on like a judge and like fucking throw a barbell at him or get oh, crazy? Yes. Oh. Ronnie Teasdale, another buddy of mine that they <laughs> beat. The- <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man, we could do like yeah. There's so tell many- me, I want to know, so, I want to hear a story, bro. That's why I asked. So there was like the coolest competition. So before, like the games was cool, but the games was like un- it was sort of attainable, but it was very regionally hot. Yeah. So in SoCal everybody like knew who was the shit i don't know a single person anymore i'm sure the guys that are still in it like no but crossfit the community we all trained together so it was like we would all drive and there was 30 gyms and from la to san diego so it was like we all we all knew each other yeah. and the fuck i forgot where i was going <laughs> <laughs> what did you know, i, I want to oh, know ronnie teasdale so yes, we had very yes. local competitions and it was like the big competition in SoCal was the OC Throwdown. Okay. The big one in the Northeast was like Ben Bergeron's thing. Wadapalooza was the Southeast. And then there was a couple up in the Northwest. So like it was very, very regional. Yeah. And Wadapalooza is the most fun, by the way. More fun than the games. What a great Go name. That. Do they model um, Lollapalooza? Now, is that because yeah. of who's putting it on? They do such a great job. Yeah. Of the, yeah. yeah. They do a really good job. So, it's funny how that stuff really matters, you know? This was like the one of the first online qualifiers for a local competition. And this kid, Ronnie Teasdale, I freaking love him. Um, he's a nut. But he, back in the day, would his gym was called CrossFit Mean Streets. It was in downtown LA, in Skid Row. And it was the <laughs> most heinous thing they used to film fight club in it and in the basement there was two bums living in the basement of the gym that would like come upstairs and be like hey guys the ceiling's falling down and like why are you in the basement (laughs) why are like it was so grinding but he was able to like make it work so he he snapped on a judge uh so there was like some backstory of there's always probably like a girl involved but there was some other gym owner like thing whatever it was so we're at the oc throwdown and she starts no repping him and he's looking at her and like it happens again it happens again it happens again and he's like oh this is personal and as soon as he's done with his last rep he just kind of like happened to drop it (laughs) over her and it was like oh no this is gonna be bad this is bad pr like well, this is not what we want for the sport right now and you can go online like if you if you i think if you youtube his name the very first like thing it's you could type like ronnie teasdale and then google autofills like throwing a barbell at a judge <laughs> like there's no reason to look him up unless you're looking for that video <laughs> oh, what are some other like unique stereotypes in that world because I, th- I find this so fascinating because I'm, I'm relatively new to this world and i mean when we started podcasting when we started diving deep but what are some other things in that world that are, are i guess indicative of it or i don't really know any stereotypes anymore. yeah, yeah. The stereotype, i mean you got paleo you, the, you got the libertarian thing you the got, stereotype yeah. used to be well, like libertarian like thing board faded. Shorts. faded yeah remember like the board shorts no shirt stereotype like oh, all, like yeah. all crossfit yeah. was so so cow that like yeah. you couldn't work out with your shirt on you had board that board shorts, shorts. <laughs> <Crossfit was laughs> you're gonna go hit the beach and surf right afterwards yeah, right, right. which made a lot of yeah. sense right? Right, right wow wow that's kind of that, that's kind of faded though when you guys started you were like the the were you guys like the official podcast and i don't mean official but we like the podcast the crossfit podcast well, yeah, we have nothing to do with CrossFit, yes. the company, but, but, but you we were like were, we were like the first kind of biggest strength conditioning podcast that was mostly followed by CrossFit. That's it. That's it. And sure. did you see your guys' growth grow along with the sport of CrossFit? Was totally. that what fueled a lot of it when it first started off? Yeah, because we we rode we rode the wave that the games had kind of created. Uh-huh. Like the games was really the thing that made crossfit go from just something that was kind of fun and some people knew about it to like going mainstream it was kind of like the ufc had the ultimate fighter and that was really like the tipping point for the ufc to bring it mainstream yeah. i think the games did that for crossfit and we the games was started in 2006 or seven 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 and so it'd been around for a couple of years but it hadn't really like caught like big 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 mainstream attention yet and we started in late 2011 recording some shows and then early 2012 we posted our first episodes and then while CrossFit was on the rise kind of peaking I want to say CrossFit probably peaked in the US like in 2000 late late 2015 14-15 and so like we were CrossFit was 
accelerating and we were like just starting this podcast thing so we just got to ride that wave no but and we had almost no competition at the time now did you guys, and the other thing was, as well podcasting was just taking off also right. so we, we were riding two Perfect very storm, big waves yeah, yeah, yeah i was yeah. looking at podcasting and i was and i i totally recognized there was no one doing good strength and conditioning advice because i was listening to some other guys i was listening to rob wolf for one and it was all nutrition it's very content driven yeah. and um and I, I just was, I I was talking to other gym owners very consistently. I was on the phone with guys talking about training, talking about gym ownership. It was I I, I was getting to the point where I actually was considering like should I be charging for consulting because I'm on the phone hours a week, mm-hmm. to, talking to these guys because they don't have any they don't know anything about training. Their background before a lot of these guys were gym owners and coaches was they were a firefighter. Mm-hmm. They, they don't know the business. I heard that, yeah. They're, or, well, they're not. A lot thing. of them, they're, they don't have degrees in kinesiology and things like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I, that was one of the reasons we wanted to do the podcast is because. So you guys saw, like, the, you saw well, the writing I, on the wall. I, well, yeah. It was like, well, nobody at that time was good at, really good at weightlifting. And, and we had, uh, our background was weightlifting before CrossFit. And think just a lot of things like that. I was like, all right, we could just take actual strength and conditioning advice and weightlifting advice and bring it in this podcast to be amazing for people. Mm-hmm. Um, so it definitely saw a big opportunity there. When, when did it, you guys decide to monetize? When did that become a thing where you're like, oh shit, this is a business? Well, we, we thought it was a business the whole time. Yeah, because uh, you guys already had a business. It was You were already thinking that the podcast... We already, ha- we yeah. already own a gym. Right. So uh, we were yeah. like looking for the next... Yeah, fill your I mean, gyms we, we were already we, we had experimented with many things between opening the gym and then doing the podcast mm. that had failed or mm. just wasn't a thing for us. I mean, we took a swing at equipment distribution. Oh, no, God, that's right. a tough one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. No margins there at all. We, we yeah. sunk 50K Fuck. in, mm. got 50K out, and I said, Fuck this, we're done. Um <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> you guys save uh, 50k yes. uh, hey, process but you know. five years of your life that's how it goes, yeah dude. it took me three months Ooh. to know yeah. i did not want to be in that business but like so when the podcasting thing happened it, I, I what i want people to know is there was a ton of what a lot of people might think of as failure between opening the first successful business and then the second one, it wasn't like a smooth transition. So we were always looking to create other things. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. when when uh, the podcast, when we started it, it felt good, but we weren't sure that it was going to be like the thing. Mm-hmm. When, so, did, yeah, when did you guys have no that? idea it was going to turn into what it turned into at all. Mm-hmm. Like I, I always wanted to have an online company. Like the first show that we started was, was Technique Quad which was just going to be me making technique videos online. I was posting them to a website. I wanted to do seminars at the gym, record them, and then sell digital information products online. I thought that was a great system that I could just I could put on a seminar at our gym whenever I wanted to. Yeah. Record it, put it online. People that like my technique quad videos would go watch these other more comprehensive uh, strength conditioning-based digital information products and we could just make a little money on the side. Mm-hmm. Right. If that business was just that business where I was just doing that, we'd be just you know, single digit percent as big as we are right now. Sure. But these guys, like about six months after I started making those videos, had this podcast idea and it was very obvious within within a month or two of doing the podcast that this was really actually going to be the thing right, right. that was going like, to get the traction. So the business model basically stayed the same. But so you we, still but, did the but, online but the technique. The content piece was radically different mm. and was way more engaging, way more exciting, way more fun to listen to than the thing that I was doing. And so... This became the main thing, and then Technique Quad became just kind of a fun side project for me because I still enjoy doing that. And then, and then the digital information product piece went from being like one-off, you know, single course sales to uh, online continuity-based training programs. And then that was the other big thing that that was a game changer for us was now we had stable recurring revenue, and so we had we had stable content generation that we we had to produce on a weekly basis, and then we had stable monthly recurring revenue, continuity-based online training programs, and now we have a real, actual, sustainable, scalable company. Well, I, re- you know, I don't know if you guys see this a lot. I know I see it a ton is because you guys are one of the only, not only, but a handful of podcasters that I met when we were first getting started that I was like, oh, finally, someone who has actually a real business. Yeah. 
not just podcasting, getting a lot of people listening and then peddling some shit or making a percentage or hoping that they're going to make all this money off for advertising. You guys actually had legitimate value that you were providing and you were thinking about the scaling piece. I see a lot of people right now in this space, even some kind of successful right now that are relying on things that I go like, well, hopefully that's still there in three or five years. Like, I don't know if that's still going to be there. It doesn't, it's not a real business model. Like if you took the podcast out and the listens every single day, you're not making any money off your advertising or the people that you're trying to push and market because you don't have a real business. Yeah, one of the biggest mm-hmm. uh, uh, myths is that you, you're you going to make all your money with sponsorships with podcasts. By the time you make a lot of money with sponsorships, you're massive. You're already a big podcast. You're not going to You guys didn't even well. fuck with it at the beginning. You, you, got, your, you got to be big yeah. or else. We didn't even Damn. consider it until yeah. like a couple months ago. Yeah. Wow. Was, yeah. Oh, so before that, you weren't even sponsored. Yeah, they you, weren't you, even. They, any it's been, it was we Mike and I sponsors in but January. Yeah. yeah. January. I remember when you called oh, me on the January. phone and you were asking me questions. You're like, hey, we're thinking about doing it. I remember that's we were right. talking. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But but that, the thing is that I think that's so important to learn from that while like sharing this on the podcast because I get it a lot. I get a lot of kids that, that are young adults that reach up reach out to me that are wanting to start a podcast and they have this brilliant idea. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the business plan behind this? Like how do you plan to monetize? Well, you know, I'm going to provide this value and well, I'm going to have all these people and then I'll get sponsorships and I like these companies. Well, the other thing too is you got to figure out how niche are you going to get now? Right. Because you've got to get even more niche right. than ever before because it's so crowded. Like mm. how are you actually going to stand apart? Right. Because it's like, I started the Bledsoe show and I have a, a good friend who just will say whatever the fuck he thinks. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, what's going to be different between what you're doing and Joe Rogan? Like, how is that actually any different? Right. Because it doesn't sound any different. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like I got to go like a step further than, because I'm talking about of just a lot of subject matter I like. Right. Which is, that's another thing podcasters get into. Being someone who just starts off talking about whatever they like and that picking up, not likely. (laughs) Yeah. Not likely. You got to be really fucking cool. You have to, (laughs) yeah, yeah, you have to be cool. You have to be well known already before, Mm -hmm. before trying to pick that up. I think a lot of guys are listening to somebody who's doing that and he's going, yeah, yeah. If you have that following already, then I mean, nobody's going to want to, nobody cares about you until you're somebody that's already well known. Otherwise, yeah, I remind people all the time. Joe Rogan was a uh, UFC and now a commentator, uh, fear factor. Stand up oh, comedian. For, for, he's been visible for a long and then, time. And then he had decades of being an entertainer yeah. for. Uh Dude, he's, doesn't Joe Rogan do such a good job of, of convincing you that he's just kind of a normal guy? Oh, do you know, <laughs> not, not an absolute fucking pro. Yeah. Yeah. He's a total pro. Yeah. Oh, I remember but he he plays it off like oh, I'm just some fucking yeah. doofus. I, I, smart. Like, I'm yes. just I'm just a stand up like, comedy. Just like, 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 about, you know, yeah. I, I host cage fights. When we like, when we were, uh, he's an absolute pro. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, when we were sure. interviewing Shab, Shab was saying. He, I, we are. I was asking like some of the most influential people that he's been with that's helped him and so that, and bar none, he's like it's Joe Rogan and then everybody else. He's yeah. like Joe is the most well prepared, disciplined person I've ever met in my life, and he says that guy puts hours and hours of research in before every single interview before he goes. So, mm-hmm. but he doesn't play. You don't think that smokes yeah. weed, he plays it just all, talks all, like yeah. that. Just, cool conversation. But that's the now. magic, though. He right? did his homework. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. check this out. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. You guys will love this because uh, just recently on our show. We decided to like share like we were, were kind of reminiscing after three years and we were going over the stupidest shit that we'd ever thought of if we had did. <laughs> and probably like one of the ones oh, one that dude. came I out had a there. really excellent idea to uh, advertise our podcast on porn sites mm-hmm. it yeah. was very cheap you know like the numbers it's very all make cheap sense. to get a click on a lots podcast. of views <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of okay. people are there everybody's visiting yeah, the porn 100%. site and our, and our our show is very well, your, demogra- our, we're your a demographic little racing, and our demographic right? probably look very much yeah. alike <laughs> <laughs> we're primarily guys 25 to 34 yeah. that's why we yeah. thought it was there brilliant you, there you go. right yeah. so we yeah. actually set out yes, and had homework test. everybody I mean, on, had to go on home paper, I was like that's, that's, that's sense, man. <laughs> we, all wrote, right we all wrote <laughs> ads we all wrote right. ads came back to work and <laughs> Doug went out looked for images to match the ads and you should have seen the fucking <laughs> oh ads God, that the we had we created well, because the idea uh, absurd <laughs> the idea can, was, we, can we see these ads I'll tell you one of them just tell them one of them the idea was you're on a porn site how am I going to get you to click 
over here to my podcast while you got your probably your I'm, hands are occupied. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm busy. Like, what do you want? Get out of my way. The only way to do that uh, is, to, is to make it more porn. So yeah. the so the so everything was it was they were porn. They were like mind the shock pump, and awe, like porn ads. So it was approach. like so like a girl bending over, right? And it'd be like fill your holes with mind pump or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is these are real ads that we actually were gonna. And I think we ran one of them. We did for like two days, and then we're like, what the oh. fuck are we doing? <laughs> It's a terrible idea. I love that you guys had like a brainstorming session. It's like, let's go with that That's one. okay. So why, that, that's one, the funny why it was so funny was that like this was literally like two or three days of work. You know I, was like the, like, I was like, I was like, I would love to see the ones that you were like, I don't think that's good. Oh, that, Doug, no, Doug has them all. Oh, we, we all came, we all came them, with yeah. five. Oh, and we have them written down. So we actually pulled them out after we had we got all high and we had this conversation. We started cracking <laughs> up. And we're like, let's let's go see him because I couldn't remember all of them. And Doug pulls them up and we we're like, oh my God, dude. What were we that's so well, funny. because it was, it was, it was pretty pretty did they work? She, she, no, well, we, we, no, you got to go to the edge. No, yeah. no, if you don't, no, if you don't no, know no. where the edge is, <laughs> what the fuck? No. Are you well, doing? dude, the cost per click is like nothing, and those sites get visited by so many different people. Yeah. It sounds brilliant. Yeah, it's I blame can- cannabis. I think that was yeah. one of those, those weed <laughs> ideas where you're like, that's brilliant. <laughs> that no one's, one's in this space right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you guys have any ideas like that, so you, or, or any things that you did in the past where you're like, ah, that was a dumb idea? <laughs> Well, God, we, we, oh, certainly, we certainly do. Countless. <laughs> right? top, hey, top I, ours. Come on. You have to, <laughs> I've got like, I've got like Make years. Make feel better. There's like you know an entire I mean? years that were just bad ideas. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, uh, I was trying to launch like four new projects at the same exact time. Oh, that was the ultimate bad oh, idea. Shit. Yeah. And I even knew it. It was like everyone was telling me. I knew it. For some reason, I think I can do it. Right. Like, I, yeah. There's like I'm different. Like, like there's some, but that, I, I think that's also this like the mark of the tip like a, a good entrepreneur is not listening. No, you gotta you, you <laughs> gotta kind of have that blind faith. There's you can't you can't be so if you listen to people, dark, if, if you listen to everybody, you would never start right. a fucking business, right? Yeah, right. And so and paralysis like, by analysis, and that you way. would never like make these like these leaps that might have to happen during the business mm-hmm. and and all that. And so I think that there's I, I've I'm attempting to learn to listen. To like wise words, you know what I mean? <laughs> but but like filter yeah. out the the people who are afraid. Yeah, mm. you know it's like getting getting dialed into that is like okay, that's a really good point. Is like, this what, person speaking out of fear because right. they're afraid or jealousy, of it? fear or jealousy or whatever on the from instead or, of someone who's or, 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 or are they like no, this yeah. is actually kind of fucking yeah dumb. yeah like, like listen yeah. dummy, I've tried this already. Yeah. 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 L- listen, you, you got as many as many times at bat as you want. You swing as many times as you want. You're gonna hit the ball more. You're gonna you have higher odds of hitting the ball if you swing more. Yeah, that's I'll, just the way fucking business works, man. And I've gotten to the point now where I've been doing business long enough to where I um. Don't oh shit I'm I'm gonna keep this thought God damn it. <laughs> uh oh <laughs> <laughs> business swinging the bat taking turns taking oh yeah turns. There you go. I used to feel like it was my last yeah like I I'm gonna do this business thing and if this doesn't work out everything's fucked mm-hmm. and now I'm like wow well, if we fail that's okay mm-hmm. <laughs> like well, like how many times have we like swung and failed and that's this the, and that to, in my and now opinion, I'm like I'm like you know what that is even the if this imp- doesn't work yeah we're gonna learn thing, a shit I've been, ton I've been broke yeah it happens alright the most important part of failure I think is that lesson right there is to get comfortable with it what is the worst that's gonna happen well you know what I think I think the thing that helped me the most is it's like one thing to t- have that conversation with yourself but I think uh, what most people are tied to that keeps them uh, from making like those uh, the like having that risk of like I know I'll be it's fine if I'm broke. People are attaching their own personal value to how much how many dollars are in the bank. Sure, right, right. And so it's like okay, like if I don't have if I have this much money in the bank, then I'm valuable. But if it goes down, even though you know you're, you know you're going to be okay, your ego doesn't know that. Oh, it's exactly it's all ego. Yeah, yeah it's once, all ego. Once you realize <laughs> once you realize that once you start to develop the confidence that okay, if if this all goes sideways, if it doesn't work out, I'm not only am I going to be okay, but I'm going to learn from this shit. I'm not going to waste oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Then you become not fearless because fearless I hate that word because it's bullshit. Everybody has fear. I think you uh, you're okay with it. 
Mm-hmm. So you go in and you're scared, you but you're friends like, with it. but you're like, yeah, exactly. You have a good relationship. with Well, it. that's where growth yeah. happens. You're comfortable. Growth happens in their failures. Right? I'll say this: uh, fear feels different in my body now than it used to. Mm-hmm. That's like, and I think it's, I think it's from do, like working on that relationship mm-hmm. with that feeling we call fear. Yeah. What's right. that old saying? There's only, you, uh, the only thing to fear is fear itself or uh, don't fear. It was your fear of fear that was the problem. It was your own feelings about your own feelings. Right. Just ex- experience the fear. That's and, it. And I find that when I, if I have that fear and I breathe and I expand my body when I'm in this state of fear, it turns into excitement. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It doesn't feel the same anymore. Mm-hmm. I haven't, yeah, you've I've, framed it. I haven't had anything happen to me that was so frightening that or, or painful that I couldn't open my body to it. We had this conversation the other day where, and I used a, a different analogy because I think when you talk about fear like that, and, and this is good because we have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to the show. When you talk about fear like that, it's, it's hard for people to grasp because fear tends to paralyze you. And so when you're frozen and you don't know what to do, like a deer in headlights, it's difficult to be conscious of how your relationship is with it because you're just reacting. And, but, but a lot of our listeners also work out. And when you work out, you feel pain, but you perceive pain differently than the average person, or at least the pain of working out. I've trained lots of beginners, and when they first get started, they can't even tolerate the fucking pain of a muscle burning or of a squat or a stretch. They can't tolerate it. But somebody who has been working out for a while, when we feel the exercise pain, I feel the same pain as that beginner. We feel the same thing. I just have a different relationship with it. And I enjoy it, or I I thrive off of it, or I understand what it's doing for me. And that's the same thing with fear with, with business. I mean, you know, if you haven't failed, you haven't tried enough times. And I don't know anybody that succeeded in their definition of success. Because I have to be clear, some people think success just means making a lot of money or just whatever. I know lots of people who make lots of money who are total failures. So that's not the point. But when you, for you to really reach your definition of success, you're going to fucking fail because <clears throat> the only thing that's going to push you to grow in the direction or in the right yeah. direction of total success is something that's really fucking uncomfortable. Otherwise, you're just going to sit well, and chill. Well, if you're, not, if, you're not, if you're not experiencing fear regularly, you're, you're playing small. Right. Yeah. Like, you should be uncomfortable. That's well, called no yeah, meaning. That's safe, called nihilism. Yeah. I think, also, I just really want to experience really cool shit. And in order to do that, you're going to have to put yourself out there. Like, you can oh, live yeah. a really normal life but if you recognize that you have to kind of stare this thing down mm-hmm. in order to do something really cool, I'm super interested in living a very large, epic life. Hell yeah. Right, right. And in order to do that, I have to do it way different than everyone else. Right. Like a radically different view that is extremely cool to me. Right. And being around all the other people that are like on their own wavelength is super cool because – they don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Dude, it's They're, great. Well, yeah. once you realize, too, that the the bigger the challenge and the, the scarier it is and the more fear, the more rewarding it is on the other yeah. side. And once you start making that connection and you get those moments where you're like, fuck, yeah. that's scary. And you're like, oh, and I catch those moments. I go, oh, fuck, this is cool. I haven't felt like that in a while. Yeah, If right. I got that scared, <laughs> yeah. I know on the other motherfucking side of this, it's going to be a wild ride. Yeah. And so when you learn to yeah. kind of flip it on its head like that, that the scarier it is and the, the bigger and the better the ride's going to be. And yeah. like, I think when you learn, I think on, entrepreneurs that are really successful piece that together. Yeah. And then you I'll, start, you start looking at all of it like a nice ride. And you know? it's I had the biggest, now. I had the biggest ride I ever had back in the fall. And it, it was, it was, it actually felt good through the process instead of what I think. Cause you're comfortable when there. I was younger. You've been there. You've been there. When I was younger, I would have called it a bad, yeah. you know, quarter. Right. Now I'm like, and that was a that it was expansive, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, the other thing too is uh, is especially with what we do, or and you can, you, I think you can broadly apply this towards entrepreneurship, because I've met enough of us to you know I can kind of make this generalization, but I'll speak more specifically with podcasting, uh, because we're all podcasters here. Is you know uh, when I feel like I have a meaning or a purpose behind what I'm doing, then. Th- uh, the fear, I feel emboldened. I feel, yeah. I feel courageous in the face of fear. It's not like I don't feel it. I still fucking feel it. But I feel a lot of courage. We, I had, we had probably, I can say this for myself, one of the most impactful moments of our career uh, a couple days ago at Paleo FX. So we're walking around mm-hmm. the convention and you know, fans are coming up and you know, we're shaking you know, hands and 
you know, high-fiving people and just having a great time. We have such a blast at those places. And we're on our way out, and I'm looking around, and Adam's in front. Doug's over here. I look, where's, Doug, where's Justin? I turn around. I see Justin, and uh, somebody, a fan had, fought, had found him, and I could see the look on his face and on her face. I'm like, whoa, this looks like a serious conversation. I walk up, and she's crying, and we're all starting to get emotional, and she tells us about how, you know, she said it's like two or three years ago, she had these autoimmune issues that were terrible. She lost 25 pounds. Her parents didn't believe her. Nobody believed her. They thought that she was anorexic, but she couldn't keep weight on. She felt terrible. And she's like, and the only thing I had, she's like, my friends abandoned me. The only thing I had was, was mind pump, and that saved my life. And I felt like that's fucking purpose it's right there. There's very some meaning. powerful, yeah. So then when you get scared of making a new change or trying a new thing or whatever, I remember that, yeah. you know what I mean? I remember the responsibility of yeah. that, you know? Have you guys been impacted like that by any of your fans where you feel like, oh, shit, this is... There's, There's more to this here. than just yeah. being my business. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Those things are hard to believe sometimes. Isn't like, it crazy? Oh, yeah. Uh, it seems surreal when that happens. Totally. <laughs> yeah. we, 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 last year uh, at regionals, we, we had gotten a – there was a new guy on our team, and uh, it was like the first time he'd really been at an event with us. And like in the first five minutes of walking in, he, I'm standing there talking to him, and someone walks right up to me and goes, you changed my life. <laughs> and he, and he, I, look, I, right look, I looked at this other guy, and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I talked to that guy and like he told me, he told me his whole story and I, so I actually don't remember the whole story but like he was so appreciative of what we had together and uh, and then he walks away and he, and the guy looks at me and he goes, you changed my life? <laughs> He's like, what, what do you guys do? <laughs> like he like, they had no idea like really like that, that we had like that level of impact. Like he had, he had kind of heard that, I, but like seeing a fan come up and say that, like totally changed his perception of what it's going to be like. You know, it's what's us. cool about that is yeah. you. It, I think it could do one of two things to you. It can either blow up your ego, right? You think you're oh, I'm the fucking man, I'm myself, or it can humble the shit out of you and t- and and it and uh, you know, of course, I, is responsibility. That's what I felt. That's yeah. what I feel that's when I hear this shit. I'm like, oh man, I got to be better i got to mm-hmm. be careful with what i say mm-hmm. in a way like i gotta be real people are listening it's, real people are listening we're making man. real impact and i, I want to communicate the right thing and not the wrong thing and i want to make sure it comes from the right place and uh it's it's fucking crazy man it's really a, a, a it's, it's a it's an honor you know to be, be able and, to do that me and mike <laughs> went to ayahuasca in peru and, and one of the really interesting parts about one of the experiences that, that i had was i could see in front of me like visually all the different lineages of all the people I knew and how they were interconnected. And I could see all the people that, that I had looked up to, like mentors to me. And I could see beyond them, mentors of them and how, cool. how I was a part of my mentor and I was actually a part of their mentor. And then I came scaling back from that and I was like, I'm a part of this. I'm not, I'm not like an end piece. I'm, I'm, I'm a piece of a very long continuum, which means other people think that I'm a role model and that's an immense responsibility and like in the, in that moment I was like I was crying and I was like whoa like I have a fucking real responsibility like people look up to me and like if I'm not the person that they want me to be or need me to be and I'm gonna let them down like I can't I just can't do that like mm-hmm. I, I have to be the person that that I want to be I have to be the best person that I can be that way when I when I meet fans or even not fans even if say it's my my nephew or my mm-hmm. cousin sure or, or anyone that like that trusts me to give them good advice like, I can't give the best advice if I'm not the best person. So my whole job is to be the best person I can possibly be. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a massive responsibility. The other thing, too, is that the advice I give people, because I get people who ask all the time about new media, right? Podcasting, social media, how to build a business around that. And I tell people, like, you, 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 no one can be a better you than you. In other words, you're the, only, the, the, the person in the world Some that can Dr. be the Seuss best right representative. Yeah. <laughs> no one's you than you. That's right. No <laughs> you only... <Whoa>. You. <laughs> Dang. Hey, we're wearing your favorite philosophers for sure. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's true, right? On a didgeridoo. The, the person that can be the best version of yeah. you is yourself. Yeah. And the other side of that is if you do, if you are lucky enough um, and you have the honor of actually influencing a lot of people, be as real as fucking possible because... It shows that you're real and it shows that you're vulnerable and you're not perfect and that's going to lead people better but it's also going to protect you because with, with that sometimes comes those big pitfalls when your ego does get hit and you're like, oh, I'm not as cool as I thought well, I was. Well, I think it matters more now than ever for this generation that's coming up now too because these I feel like these kids aren't connecting, really truly connecting to anybody and so if you're getting somebody who's in your ears that like, fuck, I can connect with this guy, I feel like they, they become even tighter and that's why we're seeing impacts like that I feel like because – the, all these relationships with this 
15 to 20 year olds that are out there right now it's it's so superficial and fake and not real and you're not getting real substance and so i think they're they're yearning for that which is also what's driving podcasting going up i mean we're growing year over year because it's people are picking up on it they're starting to figure out that like i think i mean and i know we're in the woke generation right that people say they're so woke <laughs> now, stop that. saying that let's make a collective effort well no i mean <laughs> in, in their def- in their defense i i think that people are starting some light bulbs are going off for some people that you know at some point we're going to have to start thinking like growth minded and be that way so i think that's the the intentions are right i just think that there's a lot of noise out there mm-hmm. you know yeah. What, what, have you guys talked about like the purpose, a single purpose or meaning behind what you guys do? Uh, we have, but not not in a long time since like since Anders has come on and, and the Shrug Collective has started. And we've brought in all these other people. Uh, mm-hmm. We haven't circled up and, and like you know defined like a certain mission statement or, mm-hmm. or purpose. The the one that we that we were really strong on maybe like two years ago, and kind of the last time we had like a big meeting about that was. We were fueling people's love for for fitness and health. Mm. Now that, that was like our our kind of internal slogan for a long time. It was like we don't have to we don't have to do anything in particular. We're just inspiring people and giving them fuel to go on their own journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Now I know got you guys recently have went through some business changes and you had some business coaching type stuff in the, and now it's different. How is the business working now? What are, what do you got? How are you guys monetizing or growing the business now versus before, or is it the same and just different? Um, aspects of it are the same. Okay. We we sold that chunk of our company. That's what that's what. And so okay. like, at that sale is you know giving us monthly revenue for you know a period of time, and so that's that's one revenue stream. But we're we're not focused on coaching gym owners so much anymore. Mm-hmm. We used to have Barbell Business as a show, um, and and we you know, we monetized through business owners specifically. But we've kind of backed out of that since we sold that part of our company. And so we're not focused on coaching gym owners specifically anymore are you guys figuring out like a pivot then in that case like like in terms of future monetization yeah so Um, the the biggest piece really is uh, which is also the most exciting is once that ended it gives us the ability to kind of break free of that and restart everything got it um, so that and we're literally a month into it i mean we talked about it earlier you bring five new shows on a new host of barbell shrug and we're rolling the dice and it's very nice to see that 100 percent of our audience yeah, has I think stayed that's on real, every that's single exciting, show that's really cool. yeah. and we're able to one do something that's brand new mm-hmm. it's really exciting to a lot of people and all of our friends are doing it with us like we have a house down the street and all of our friends showed up and they just happen to be working with us <laughs> now that weird <laughs> yeah and um we're just hanging out like, it's pretty cool you our, created that for yourself yeah, yeah the fact that we are taking on sponsorship money is awesome it's going to be a great thing to create long-term deals and partner ourselves so that we can travel and go meet. Now, how will that work? How will that work with like the, so it will the shrug collective collect all the advertised money. Cause it's, if it's all coming on your channel, I imagine Mm -hmm. it's all yours. We're we're, we're essentially contracting the, the other podcast partners. And so, yeah, we, we negotiate all the sponsored deals and then we just split the money. Okay. So you 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 no, that's what I was asking. I didn't know if they still hooked them up with money or not because it's still coming underneath their channel. Yeah. yeah, It's like a network, like like a network. Definitely. It's a network. It it also gives us a really cool opportunity to be very, very new in how we monetize the podcast too. Mm -hmm. Like when these guys started doing the programs, not many people were doing online programming. Mm -hmm. Now everyone has an online program to fight through the noise is a waste of your time. Like you can still do really well, but you're just another voice, a more trusted voice. But what is that? What is that? 10% cooler. Sure. Um, And then the, the online business coaching and kind of those systems when they started, there was nobody else. There's probably 10, 15 of those in in the space now from the biggest to the smallest new startup. Mm. Um, So the ability to just connect with the audience is the number one thing. Like how do we access the audience and give them a voice as much as possible. And me being brand new, I want to talk to them all the time. Yeah. I want to hang out with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah, was a fan of energy, the show. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I was a fan of the show. So the fact that I'm here is hands down the coolest experience. Like right. I'm here. Right, right, I'm in a cool. room talking to you guys. I don't know if you think that's cool, but I do. <laughs> and I think it's cool that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I you, you talk about uh, a little bit earlier, like what is the mission of the show? Mm-hmm. And I, I think it really comes down like Doug and I, um, me personally, I've kind of 
always thought that even owning a gym, whether it was the coaches, the athletes, whoever it was that I was in front of, my sole purpose in fitness was to educate them on some a, a, a way that could get them to their goal. So if you lead from a place of education, now you're kind of giving people the tools to make a decision. And if we can inspire action, that's awesome. I want to be entertaining as shit. Mm -hmm. I want you to mm -hmm. want to crave hearing my voice in your ears. Yeah. Like it should be so fun to hang out because I love strength and conditioning. I really want you to love it. And if you love it as much as I do, everything in your life will happen because of a barbell. Mm -hmm. That's really weird to think about. But since I was 13, it's the only thing I've really done and been good at. And here I am. Yeah, yeah. And the enter, the enter, you, you said the entertainment piece, the fun part, that makes a big difference. Because there's a lot of smart podcasts out yeah, there huge. that are boring as fuck. Yeah. Oh, dry. So the oh, only yeah. people listening to them are like us, you know, like yeah. fitness nerds, like, you yeah. know, and there's not a lot of us. Right. And if you're really trying to impact and help yeah. people, you want to try and reach the people that are not like you know, you get a room full of guys like us, we're we're gonna go seek it out anyway yeah. and we're gonna figure it out. But there's a lot of people out there who they need a little bit of, you know, that little extra push, that little extra help, and entertaining them is a great way to kind of, you know, get them in, get them out there. Well, I, just in the short time, I've noticed that there's like a kind of like a continuum of personality or information, and the goal is to be at least a B in both of them. Uh, yeah. And if you get to like an A minus, you're a gangster. <laughs> if you're Paul Check, you've you've topped it out. Like, <laughs> like those. But if you're if you're out. too far on one end, like it's too dry and no one listens, or it's no too value. personality yeah. and no one cares, mm -hmm. right. and. You need to work on both. Um, even when I owned a gym and we were running classes, I would talk to our coaches about how we are coaches. This is strength and conditioning, but you should remember that this is performing arts. We're out here to make sure that people are having a fantastic time every single time they're in here. Yeah. Excellent point. Do you yeah. guys, yeah, if you guys get asked like, hey, I, from a kid or someone who's wanting to start up a podcast, what's the single piece of advice you give them or what do you normally say to them? You tell them, don't do it, it's really hard or... Stay out of my lane. I tell them to build a team. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to do it by yourself. Like I, I think anytime someone's starting a company, they don't have to do this, but I, I think having like at least one or two other people who are like fully bought in with you. I think for me, my my style, my personality, my experience, like I think three is kind of the sweet spot. Um, Dave Logan calls that triading, mm. where it's, you have no matter what, there's always someone available to like take the reins. Or if one person's really busy, then you still have one other person to collaborate with. Where you're not you're not siloed all the time. And then you can, you can have like you were talking about being a bee at, at education and entertainment. But what if you had two separate people and one guy's an A in one and one guy's an A in the other? Now you have two complementary people. Right. And so having at a minimum one complementary business partner and then maybe one person that's kind of in the middle, like Mike's on that spectrum, I'm way over here and Andrews is kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of how I, I view us uh, as far as like who's like creative and who's like really organized or analytical. Mm -hmm. And I think Andrews is kind of right in the middle of me and Mike. And so we're- It's like we're, if you guys had a kid. It'd yeah, be, it'd be I'm, Andrew. Baby I'm, I'm the organized one. Of He's the really <laughs> <laughs> so sure you are. <laughs> totally. Am I uh, interviewing you guys? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I don't right remember now? the nine <laughs> emails that I got already. Yeah. <laughs> remember the year that he said was a bad idea? Those were the years. Well, and then, you know, he's talking about Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, this is just fucking 40. <laughs> well, then, so just now, like, yeah. All this laughter that's happening right now, that makes it its so much easier to listen to like a room full of people fucking cackling. <laughs> like, it makes your day better. If you're on your commute and you're listening to people fucking crack up laughing in your ear, your day is better. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, it's, it's harder to do that in a one-on-one -on -one setting to get that level of energy where one person's interviewing one other person. That's true. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little more dry. Yeah, especially especially like like I'm an analytical, more organized person. Like if I was interviewing one of you guys one on one, it would be it would be very dull compared to what we have going on right now, which is like the full other end of the spectrum. There's six of us. Good God, six. Yep. Seven. Yep. Yep. Six. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he's, yeah. Doug's over here not talking. So seven people, <laughs> six people talking. Um, there's a lot of energy here, and so I think having multiple people on a podcast, three or four people, I think is kind of the sweet spot. There's there's enough perspectives and enough different. 
um, knowledge basis to like Dude's have the education formula, piece. Fellas. That's right. <laughs> and then, but there's enough, there's enough of a conversational uh, flow to it where it's fun and entertaining. You go off to some tangents, you tell some stories, people laugh, jokes mm-hmm. are told, and there's like like a sitcom, like there's a laugh track, and that makes the sitcom so much better. If you ever seen it like a like a regular TV sitcom and there's, and there's no laugh yeah, track, yeah. it's like no. really awkward and not funny at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. no. So the the fact that the group of people can like can laugh and like bring that energy to to the the entry to the education uh, i think is really really powerful so that having different people to add personalities on the show is 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 important but also those people are going to have different roles within the company and like you guys said earlier if it's not a company well then you're just you're just you're you have limited resources you can't you can't travel you can't do it in person you got to buy plane tickets you need rental cars you get you got to buy food especially if you're traveling with three or four or five people you need some revenue stream to keep the business alive and to make it where you don't mm-hmm. all have to like be firefighters on the side mm-hmm. right yeah. so if you can't put full time into it well then it's just a side project and it's only yeah. going to go so far yeah the other thing i'll tell people too with that is whoever you pick to be your partners on your podcast podcast make sure these are people that you love to talk to when you're not podcasting totally because that's what you want to hear when you turn on the mics you don't want to have somebody like i hate talking to that fucking guy (laughs) we only have conversations on the podcast like when we turn these mics off it's 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 still mind pump for us we're still same conversation still having a great time and and that's easier it's easier to do that otherwise it's forced and much more difficult yeah you gotta you gotta want to travel with them and hang out with them all day like like here at, at paleo fx we've been here since thursday it's sunday night right now and we have worked we have woken up at six in the morning and worked all day and fucking just like slammed into our pillows at like 10, 11, mm-hmm. 12 o'clock at night. And I feel like I'm on fucking vacation. Yeah. <laughs> and we work all yeah, day. That's so weird. Like, what time is it right now? Like, it's, yeah. it's Sunday night at 9 p.m. Yeah, yeah. And we're fucking podcasting right now. Yeah. And I'm fucking loving it. <laughs> Isn't it crazy, yeah. though? Don't you guys? I mean, we're, all, fun, about, man. we're yeah. all about the same age. And I feel like it was so necessary to go through all that shit though to get to here oh, oh yeah. yeah to really Lots appreciate it too you know what i'm saying here. right oh, yeah what were some of the worst jobs you guys had oh i had some i had some shit jobs 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. um I, I worked in a bread factory on assembly line and just all day sit, sit in one spot grab something in front of me I've slide done, it to the I've side of me grab something shit. in front of me slide oh to the God, side of me grab was, something uh, in front of me slide yeah. it to the side of me 10 hours in a row that sucked. Yeah. Wow, I, I, that sucks. I did assembly when uh, actually I was that, in high doing school. Doing the doing the work was not the worst part about it. It was the other people who were lifers that worked there uh, that you had to hang yeah. out with. Like you just said, like so you, you want somebody you want to talk to, like yeah. to be on the podcast <laughs> yeah. with you. Well, you have to hang out with people who are making a career out of being assembly line workers. Yeah, and the, totally doesn't make them bad, uh, bad people for being there or whatever. But yeah. like, but they're gonna want to talk to you because they're bored and. You, you don't just have, have to put up with ten hours of conversation with someone that might not be the most Do it like, same engaging person. person. Yeah, <laughs> like really wears on you. I had a <laughs> yeah. most intellectual. I had a summer job. Uh, I'm from Virginia Beach, and everything in Virginia Beach is somewhat related to the Navy. Um, and I got a job in which I was called a fire watch on a Navy boat, and a welder sits at the top, and you go all the way down to the bottom of an aircraft carrier and wait for the sparks to hit the ground and hope a fire doesn't happen for six 12-hour days a week. Oh, and Wait, so you're just watching? You literally sit in a hole by yourself, and there's no way a fire starting. And watch sparks. But by, it's regulated oh that God. you have to be down there. So we would just <laughs> yeah, sit down there. Damn, you were, yeah, It might be up there. It's close. Like solitary and if I'm, so the, the only way that we would stay sane is all the refrigerators and stuff. So the, the elevators are like kind of how they get the food transported around this big-ass floating city. And we found out how you could break into the fridges and like steal candy bars and... It was the worst. So I did, I did something between wow. the two of us. So I worked this assembly assembly line job when I was in high school, and one of the jobs, the the, the biggest highlight would be to rotate where you're on the assembly line, like whether you're the mm-hmm. screwing the caps, yeah. sewing the bag, you know, mm-hmm. or like the sought after job was the hopper upstairs because you could fall asleep because it was so fucking boring. <laughs> but you would we go upstairs and you've got this huge and they they bring the crane of powder over or whatever that's you know a couple thousand pounds whatever. And the, 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 all I had to do was cut the bottom open and make sure it was the powder was funneling down to the top of the funnel and sending out to the assembly line. And then that thing would run for at least a good 
I don't know, 45 minutes or so before the next bag would come and I had to do it all over. So I'm working maybe three to five minutes every 45 minutes, but you have to stay up there to make sure, you know, every once in a while you, you'll hear them go, bang, 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 hopper. And that's because the powder got clogged or something and then I got to push the bag. And go. Otherwise, I'm just standing, staring at a fucking bag for <laughs> eight to 10 hours a day yeah. all day long, waiting to be yelled at hopper or wait yeah. for the next bag at 45 minutes. So that was pretty, pretty That was oh, the protein, God. protein, yeah. uh, whey protein, right? Yeah, that was my oh, first experience right. of knowing how much bullshit supplements were too. <laughs> <laughs> just, they were letting fucking kids like me put it together. Some of that we're like, oh, creatine yeah, bottle for us. Yeah. Like, whoops, yeah. this fell in there. Oh, no big deal. Like, oh, god, it's oh, bad. yeah, oh, yeah. And then you did you see the measurements were like, oh, yeah, all no. eyeballs. Yeah, everything was <laughs> eyeballed. And, no, it was bad. Oh, it was Hilarious. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, my, I was at pizzeria, was my first job, but my third job was in the gym. I was a trainer at 18 years old, loved it from oh, day one, absolutely loved it from day one. And since been no different since. God, since then I worked in the bank. That was my worst job. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, I managed. Just wash the clock. Huh? I, I grand opened clubs for Twenty Four Fitness. I grand opened a couple of them, and then I left the company. And I wanted to open my own business, but I thought, okay, because when you're running gyms, you don't have time to pursue looking into being an entrepreneur. Because running a gym is a twelve hour a day, six day a week, or seven day a week job. I mean, I was yeah. there all the time. Just a lot of work. So I left, and I thought I'm going to get a job that's going to pay me. A decent amount while I look into you know other things I might I may do on my own, and so I I don't know how I got this job. I'm, I I guess I'm really good at, at convincing or, or or at sales. I I talked to uh, Bank of America and got hired as a premier banker. So you guys can see how loud I am and how I how I talk. And I'm <laughs> I'm in a bank. I'm in the back of an office and I'm trying to make sales calls. And I have the bankers in the front like, going. Shh. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I'm trying to close a deal. Like, I'm. This is how I talk. Yeah, you know? terrible. I've never been <laughs> in a job yeah. where I had to watch the clock. You know, I would watch the clock and just be like, two hours pass by. It feels like I'm supposed to be done by now. Yeah. <laughs> Six hours left. This is insane. <laughs> couldn't. That's how stand you live it. forever. Actually, couldn't. Stand yeah. It. yeah, exactly. Absolutely couldn't. Stand Time stands still. Yeah. Anyway, well, gentlemen, great time. Yeah, yeah, great man. time. Oh, for having I enjoy hanging out with you guys. Yeah, definitely. Oh. We gotta do this again for sure. Yeah, yeah, we gotta have you guys come visit us. You guys can come to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your yeah. ass up there. We have a North Cali. Trip we coming. definitely. Are you guys gonna do a trip up there? It's, oh, awesome. it's, it's high on our list of places to go. Yeah, yeah. excellent. We can do some YouTube content too. We'll yeah, do a whole yeah. Thing. We could spend like two weeks up there. Right. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I have to have a kid first, and then. I keep saying, I'm oh, like, wow. when the kid happens, I'll be able to go do these things. And Doug keeps looking. He's like, yeah, because most people have kids and then have a lot more freedom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how you start and traveling. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to do a world yeah. tour. I yeah. have a kid. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You obviously don't have kids yet. No. Yeah. 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 Your wife can't wait for you. You don't know how it town. actually works. Yeah. 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 All right, gentlemen. Thanks again. Yeah, Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>